If like me, you've been desperate to install a surveillance camera system at your house, but you just don't have the money for a professional wired solution, then you might want to watch today's video because today I'm going to be reviewing a full HD, wire-free, self-charging security camera system that doesn't even need its own SIM card and all that for £130 and it's totally solved my security camera problems. So why am I doing this video today? Well, my garage has been broken into a couple of times in the last few years. I've been getting desperate. I haven't been able to find a solution which I could afford or which I found was any good. And a couple of years ago, I did a video on an Aldi driveway alarm. The driveway alarm was absolutely hopeless. And on the back of that video, I got contacted by Reolink, who are professional providers of smart home security solutions. They said to me, would you be happy to review our product? And desperate as I have been to try and find a solution to my problems, I thought absolutely yes, let's have a look at this. I should stress that I'm being paid absolutely nothing to do this video. They've got no control over it whatsoever. So I've tried to be as critical and objective about this product as possible. So the people at Rearlink have sent me two products to have a go with today. We've got the security camera itself and also the solar panel. So opening the box, First thing you notice is, you know, it's pretty nice packaging. You've got this initial letter, it's almost like opening, a, I don't know, a high-end mobile phone these days. You've got a quick start guide. You've got a sticker and a few mounting templates, which we'll come on to later on. So, quick look at the camera. First thing you think is, this seems like a quality piece of kit. It's sturdy, it's weighty, and it comes on this magnetic base which is great for internal use around the house because you can install it on the ceiling on a beam or perhaps most obviously discreetly on a bookshelf with the camera we also get this battery pack and a few other accessories which I'm going to be using today because my camera is going to be installed outside this is a strap, I think, to attach it around a tree. And then you've got this anti-falling safety rope if you decide to use it with the magnetic mount that I showed you earlier. And then we've got the USB cable. Some screws and plugs for wall mounting the unit. And then you've got this external sort of sleeve which fits onto the camera to weatherproof it when it's outside and this mounting plate again for external applications. And for the sake of completeness, I should point out that there's a weatherproof strip on the side, which reveals the micro SD card slot and also a reset button for which they provide you with a key. And then turning it over onto the back, we've got further weatherproof cover where you plug in the solar panel. So then we've got this quick start guide to talk us through the setting up of the unit. And I've got to say, this quick start guide scope, it's pretty comprehensive. Now, there's a few ways you can charge the unit, either before attaching it to the security camera separately like this, or through the solar panel. I prefer to charge it separately before sliding it onto the camera itself, because there's no on off switch on the camera. And as soon as you slide it on, you get plagued by the setup instructions for pairing the unit with your smartphone. So the first thing we've got to do is slot the battery onto the camera. Camera has been started up. Please run Real Link app, add the camera and set it up. Please run Real Link <laughs> I told you she was persistent. So, as the voice prompt has requested, we now need to Download the Reelink app, which on my Android phone I access through the Play Store. And then it's just a question of clicking on the plus icon to open up the QR code scanning function. It's now asking me to scan the QR code on the back of the device. That was pretty straightforward. It's asking me to connect the camera to the Wi-Fi. Which basically involves you just putting in your Wi-Fi password. It's asking me if I heard the voice prompts, which I did. Now, we're, we're faced with this screen. So what we have to do now, with a big QR code on the phone screen, we simply point the camera at the QR code on the screen. 
from a distance of about 30 centimeters away. Scan succeeded. Camera is connecting to your router. Please wait. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to RioLink. So now I can press the scan succeeded. And I can press the connection to the router succeeded. And it's now connecting to the device and initializing. Now, it doesn't say this in the instructions, but when you're prompted to create a password, it's a good idea to set up a unique individual password for each camera that you're adding to your system. Because when you come to set up the RioLink client on your desktop, on your computer, you need individual passwords for the client to recognize the different cameras in your system. So now I've just got to name the device. So I'm going to call this Drive Cam. And that's it. That's all done. So now, you can see that the camera is connected and ready for action. So, in terms of camera installation, the quick start guide is also pretty useful. There's information on setting the PIR sensor to the right sensitivity level, which I'll come on to in a bit, important notes for reducing false alarms, and also setting the optimum PIR sensor installation angle and distance from target. Now, I'm going to be installing these cameras outside, so I'm not going to be using this magnetic mount, so I'm going to be using this fixed wall mount. In terms of installing this camera outside, RioLink have made provision for external installation. There is a rubber seal on the connectors here, which weatherproofs the battery once slotted into place. And we also have this skin, which is designed to be opened up at the back, as you can see I've done here, to insert the solar panel charging lead. It's a good idea before inserting the camera into the skin to put your SD card, micro SD card, into the slot. I'll come on to the benefits of the SD card shortly, but once you've got the SD card in position and the camera up your tree or wherever it's going, particularly if you're using a solar panel, there's absolutely no reason for you to interfere with the camera. So now would be a good time to get all these little things done. So inserting the camera into its weatherproof skin is a little bit of an art, but just takes a couple of minutes to get it into the right position. Like that. And then you're inserting this part of the wall mount bracket into the underside of the camera. I've seen a few reviewers questioning whether this wall mount is slightly flimsy, but I haven't had any problems. My cameras have been installed now for over a month and literally it's an all metal construction with the exception obviously of this plastic element of the base. And I haven't had any problem with the camera slipping or moving position once installed on the wall. So, unboxing the solar panel itself, it's a similar story. You've got sort of premium packaging with the jig for the um, mounting bracket, a quick start guide and another surveillance sticker. Some more screws and wall plugs and this tripod plate. Then you're given a decent amount of flex on the back and then the panel itself plugs by means of this weatherproof plug into the back of the security camera. Installation is pretty straightforward and again it's covered in three pages of the quick start guide. Although placement of the cameras is a little bit more tricky because on one hand you want the camera far enough off the ground to stop people nicking it but on the other hand anything more than nine meters away is going to be outside the detecting distance for moving objects or living things. I position my two cameras in two strategic points around the house. The first one is absolutely great. It's above my cellar and we've got an approximate detection distance of two and a half meters which is absolutely perfect. I'll show you just how sensitive this camera is in just a few moments. The situation is a little bit more problematic up my drive where I've positioned the camera up a tree to try and provide protection for my garage being broken into which has happened a couple of times over the last few years. The problem I've got here though is it's a whopping nine and a half meters from the garage door to the camera. But there's not much I can do about this it's a problem with general placement around this part of my garden where there's no way I can easily put the camera without it being an easy target for the thieves. And you can see what happened above the garage door when they last came and they tore down a dummy camera I had above the door. So as I'll be showing you in the video, at the moment this camera is enormously effective at picking up on people coming up to the gate, but not for the garage. So that's enough about the setup, let's get into the meat of what this camera can really do. 
The main point to make is it's 100% wire-free full HD security camera. And being 100% wire-free, it's putting itself squarely in the market of us DIYers. It's got an inbuilt PIR sensor. It's got an alarm. It will send push notifications over Wi-Fi to your phone or email. You can record and download the live stream. And if that's not enough, it also has two-way audio. And all this is controlled through the RioLink smartphone app or from the RioLink client on your PC. I mentioned the desktop app for your computer at the end of this video. I've been using these security cameras for about a month now and I found the RioLink smartphone app by far the most powerful, useful way of controlling the cameras. So you'll see when you click on the RioLink app, the first screen you're met with is this one and it shows you the cameras that you've got set up. First thing you want to do is change the PIR sensitivity settings based on where you've positioned your cameras around the house or outside. You can do that by clicking on the cog, click on the sensitivity and adjust it depending on where you've got the cameras. I've got both of my cameras set on high sensitivity. The next thing you want to do is set day and night scenes. Now, I wasn't sure what this was when I first got the cameras, but it's an absolutely crucial part of your operation of the system, because just by dragging down a little bit, that reveals the two scenes I've set up here. If I long press on the day scene and click edit, you'll see that for the drive cam and seller cam, you have four functions that you can toggle on and off depending on what you want your cameras to do during the day. In my case, all I'm asking for my cameras to do is the push notification, where if somebody walks across the beam, I get sent a notification to my phone. If I do the same thing on the night scene, you'll see I've got notifications recording, so it's automatically recording anything detected by the PIR and also the alarm sounds. I could also, if I wanted to, send an email to my phone. The reason this is so brilliant is because at night time, you simply scroll down, click the night button, and the night mode is instantly set up on the cameras. Same thing in the morning when you wake up, click on the day mode, and the drive and seller cam immediately convert back to only sending me push notifications. And this is actually very important because it gives you the ability to customize your camera based on your daily habits. Well, you do not want to be plagued by an alarm every time your partner or your kids run across the beam. And also you don't want to be filling up the SD card on the camera with video clips when it's just your family at home. So how sensitive is this camera? Well, we're standing just around the corner from the seller cam. I've got my phone here now and you'll hear a ping when the notification comes through. Remember, we're in the daytime mode at the moment, so we only get a push notification to the phone. So I'm standing on the steps of the cellar, and you would have just heard that push notification come through. So if I was sat in my desk, or in the office, or wherever, I would now know that somebody was standing outside my cellar still by clicking on the rear link app when you get the notification, clicking on the seller cam. There I am, there I am. standing in front, standing of the cellar. in front of the cellar. And you can probably just about hear me about over, hear the, cellar over the cellar audio. Now, this is in fluent mode because of my Wi-Fi strength. It's the best mode for the camera to be in. But if I was to toggle that to 1080p, you can see the quality is even better. And better still than that, you can zoom in on whoever is down there at the cellar to see exactly what's going on. So that's daytime mode. I'm now gonna to change to the night scene. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing now to see what happens when you've got the alarm and the video recording. Immediately, we came to the steps, the alarm went off. And going to the cellar cam, we can press playback to access the recording. So what about the drive cam, which is a good 20 meters away from the Wi-Fi? And I'll come onto the Wi-Fi in a minute. I've got my phone out, the camera's up there in the tree. And let's see how we get on. The 
again an instant notification as soon as we got within a few meters of the camera and again this time connecting on the drive cam there we are standing on the drive so what about filming at night time I hear you ask Well, we've got a storm coming in tonight and currently torrential rain, so it's not the best time to be filming. But if I go back to mid-July at 3 a.m. in the morning, where we're about to go off on holiday, this gives you more of an example of what capability the camera has at night time. But if you're out and about and you're not on a Wi-Fi network, the notifications do still come through. But in this situation, you get a request to say, do you want to play the video over cellular? Now, obviously, you're only probably going to be playing the video for, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. But just so that you know, you've got six, 60 minutes of live feed per one gigabyte of data on the HD resolution. If you switch to the Fluent resolution, which is what my cameras are set to, you've got even more. You've got 300 minutes of live feed per one gigabyte of data. And you can see here in fluent mode, we're averaging about 250 kilobits per second. Whereas if I switch it to HD, it very quickly goes up to about 1500 kilobits per second. So depending on what data plan you're on, on your phone contract, it's probably not gonna, not gonna cost you anything just to quickly check the live feed when a notification comes through and you're not on a Wi-Fi network. Quick chat about memory and SD cards. It's well worth investing in a micro SD card for your rear link camera. I bought two 16 gigabyte SanDisk cards. They cost me £4.79 each on Amazon. The reason you need a micro SD card is if you don't have one in the camera, and you want to record something, you have to record it manually by clicking on the record icon from the smartphone app when you want to record. That is then saved, as you can see here, internally on your smartphone. If, however, you've got an SD card installed, the recording will be automatically saved to the SD card and then cleverly beamed back to the smartphone app. And then all you have to do to watch it is click on the playback icon and then, as you see here, the recordings are arranged by date in the RioLink app calendar. And you can simply click on the video itself. And here is me earlier in that clip that we recorded where I showed you how the notification worked. That clip can then be downloaded or even uploaded into the cloud. And do the solar panels work, I hear you ask? You bet they do. The drive cam solar panel is directly south facing. You'd expect that to. But this one, the cellar cam, has no direct sunlight falling on it. And yet when you check on the stats for the batteries, you'll see that the drive cam is on 100% and the cellar cam also is on 100%. And that is in spite of all the live streams I've been doing today. In fact, during the month I've been testing these cameras, they've been pretty much 100% charged the whole time. And it's also worth pointing out, we've had some pretty grim weather during the last few weeks. And the weatherproof skins have kept the cameras really well protected because I haven't had any problems or malfunctioning. Now, one of the most remarkable things about these security cameras is they do all of what you've just seen without the need for any SIM card, without the need for their own data package. But that also means, obviously, that they're very reliant on the Wi-Fi network. I have read a few negative reviews which basically criticise the connectivity of the security cameras, their sort of robustness on Wi-Fi. And I suspect this is almost entirely down to the efficiency or strength of the Wi-Fi networks of the people posting the reviews. Because there's no doubt about it, the robustness of these rear link cameras will be entirely down to the quality of the Wi-Fi strength. And I'm no tech expert, but by that I guess I mean the speed of the broadband, but also the quality of the routers transmitting the Wi-Fi signal. Now I'll come on to the support centre a bit later on, but there's, it's packed with information. And there are some FAQ guides which, amongst other things, ask the question of what the bandwidth rear link cameras require. Rear link's response is that if you set clear type, which I think is um, HD mode, clear mode, the maximum bit rate is 8192 kilobits per second, whereas in fluent mode, the bit rate is of much lower 512 kilobits per second. Now, there's a couple of points to make here. The first one is 
that although I'm on airband, which is a sort of countryside mast-based broadband system, which isn't as good as a, as a fibre-based system, I've got 21 megabits per second download and upload. So my broadband on the face of it is strong enough. And I've also got two of these Unitix Unify AC Pro wireless access points, which I installed on the advice of an AV expert friend of mine when I was having some connectivity problems in this cottage. I've got one of these downstairs beaming line of sight to the drive cam and I've got one upstairs beaming through a wall around a corner to the outside wall where the cellar cam is located. The AC Pro has a range of 122 meters so well within even the 20 meters up the drive to the drive cam. So even with these industry leading specs the Wi-Fi signal is between two and three bars which is the very bare minimum of what the support center FAQ suggests you need where they say that one bar is too weak for a stable connection and you need at least two to three bars. And even with what I think is a pretty advanced setup here, whenever I try and switch to HD using the app, I get a message almost straight away afterwards saying, please switch back to Fluent because of poor network quality. So the only thing I'd say to you is if you're thinking of stalling one or a few of these cameras around your house, just think about the quality of the router you've got and the positioning of the router, how many walls it's got to go through and where outside, how far away from the router you're going to be positioning your cameras. In short, these cameras are only going to be as robust as your Wi-Fi network and I was away this weekend, for example, Airband is pretty unreliable at the best of times and I could not access the live stream feed on my camera because obviously my Wi-Fi was down. So my quest to make this video as comprehensive as possible, we've gone well over 90 minutes and I'm guessing most of you have lost the world to live. However, the remarkable thing is I really haven't scratched the surface yet in this review of all the things that the security camera and the smartphone app that accompanies it are capable of. For example, you can toggle directly on and off the PIR function by simply clicking on the blue icons you see here and here. By clicking on the gear icon next to each camera, you've got a whole range of settings you can configure the recording settings. You can schedule how many seconds the recording goes on for. You can check on the storage yes, and reformat the SD card to delete all of the videos it's taken. And by digging into the PIR settings, you can customize the alarms at different times and days of the week. You can take photos. You can change between color and black and white and auto. And by pinching in, you can watch both cameras or however many cameras you've got on your system at the same time. You can talk through the camera via your smartphone app to ward off any would be intruders. And finally, in the menu screen up on the top left of the app, you've got a support center where you can access a range of guides pretty much on every imaginable query that you're going to have with these units. So I promised to mention the Realink client, the desktop PC app for these security cameras. Um, I'm tacking this on at the end of the video because whilst it is easy to download, reasonably easy to set up, and if you like to have a couple of cameras showing on your computer screen, as you can see now, then that's absolutely fine. My point is I've hardly even touched this since installing it. I just don't see the need. I've got my phone on my person the whole time. It's my phone where the notifications are gonna come through to, and ultimately it's my phone which I'm gonna to use to control these security cameras on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's there if you want it. So how do we sum up on the Argus 2 security camera system? I can see some industry pros stroke pedants wading in right now saying a wired system is so much more robust, so much more secure, and of course they'd be absolutely right. But a wired system also costs thousands of pounds. And let's face it, these products are aimed at DIYers like myself and you guys. And because of the really low acquisition cost of the unit, £130 for the camera and the solar panel, and the wire-free total ease of setting it up, to my mind, these points more than outweigh any issues you might have with connectivity. And I've had this camera system up and running now for over a month. And yes, I've had the odd situation where momentarily the cameras won't connect, but these issues are only temporary and the system itself is so robust that I now feel like I've got a completely secure security camera system and fundamentally a really good deterrent against intruders. You've just got to remember if you're installing one of these systems 
make sure you've got a decent router with decent Wi-Fi coverage and also decent data speeds on your broadband package. So I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please click on the like button below. Details of the cameras will be in the description tab at the end of the video, which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the arrow to the right of the video title or on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.